Hey guys, today we are going to uncover 10 common mistakes when it comes to installing security cameras. Installing security cameras is a very DIY activity, so let's look at 10 common mistakes made when it comes to the physical install of cameras and how we can avoid them. Okay, let's get started in no particular order. First off, installing a security camera too close to an object or a wall where the camera's own IR lights can reflect back into the camera, totally ruining the nighttime shot. Here we have a camera installed on the corner to capture any activity along the wall and on this side of the house. There is a drain pipe in the bottom left of the image. The image is perfect by day, but at night, however, the camera's IR lights hit the white pipe and get reflected back into the camera, blowing out the image and destroying the shot. Ideally, this camera should have been installed away from the pipe, so there is no reflection in the shot. As I handhold the camera, this is what the image should look like. If moving the camera away from the object is not an option, painting the pipe a matte black could help. To test that theory, let's cover up that pipe with some black material. Okay, here we have a side-by-side -side comparison. During the day, the image looks great as expected. And here at night in complete darkness, the image with a black material is a little bit better. We can see the details of the trees in the back of the shot. Now the lesson learned here is before installing the security camera, I like to test the footage by just holding up the camera by day and by night to ensure that I'm not getting any IR bounce back into the camera. Now the second mistake here is very similar to the first and it also deals with the IR light issues at night. When installing cameras, be careful not to install a camera too close to another camera where the IR lights from one camera causes glare on the other. There are two cameras on my patio here facing each other and I purposely omitted the other one from the frame of the other. Checking out the footage from each of these cameras, there is no glare created by the IR lights and in fact, the cameras complement each other and share the IR light for an overall better image. I'll demo that with no IR lights on, on either camera. Now, just the IR lights are active on this camera that I'm pointing to here on the left. Now, just the one on the right. And now, with both on. Okay, so back to the glare. I'll show you what to look for here with this exaggerated scenario. I've placed this wise camera here on the table directly facing this ceiling mounted camera. With its IR lights on, shining into the camera, you can see that there's a noticeable amount of glare that ruins the shot. If the camera has a slightly dirty lens, that glare is going to be greatly exaggerated, like we see here in the shot before I cleaned it and after. Now the solution here is the same as the previous, make sure to test the live feed before permanently installing the camera in its location to make sure there's no glare from other cameras. Now our next mistake deals with missing weather seals on those connections. Oftentimes when installing security cameras, the weather sealing is not done correctly or at all, and the connections are left exposed to the elements. In particular, let's talk about PoE cameras, which use the data cable to power the cameras. If moisture makes its way into this connection, it could seriously damage the camera. Just check out the burnt marks on this connection point after it was exposed to some rain. Now when exposed to moisture, the camera can get fried and rendered totally useless. Here are some options to avoid this type of damage. Before terminating the cables, add a weather sealing grommet. All outdoor cameras should have one included. Now I've noticed more frequently that manufacturers are including this style of a seal that fits on over the RJ45 connector, just in case the cable is already terminated. Now, if worse comes to worse and you have no grommet to seal that connection, you could always use electrical tape. Lastly, I just want to make a note that if your connection point is going to be hidden up inside of an eave or inside of a wall, you may think it's safe. Now, keep in mind, though, that moisture may get in there, especially on a windy, foggy day. This seal is even more critical if you live near the ocean and you have some salt spray in the air. My general rule, though, is to always protect the connection inside or out. In fact, I like to take this a step farther and protect all exposed connections, including the DC power port. All right, so this next one is related and one that I'm guilty of myself. Not testing cables before installing a camera, especially ones you terminate yourself. 
So you've gone through the trouble and the work of running a cable to a camera location, terminate the wires, install the camera, secure it, and when you plug the camera in, something is not working and you need to take it all down again. A frequent failure point can be the wire termination. I recommend a wire tester like this one here to ensure the termination was correctly performed. It's a 10 second test, which could save you a lot of time and frustration. And in this example right here, I missed the wire and it looks like seven and eight are crossed. So let's redo that connection. And now we have the results. Uh, perfect, yeah. Okay, cool. So it looks like this camera is gonna be online with no problem. So moving right along to mistake number five. When installing a camera inside, like in a window looking out, it might seem like an easy surveillance solution, but it often comes with some common mistakes. The WISE camera is reliable and cheap and can very conveniently be placed in a window to keep an eye on things by day and at night. Well, it's not quite that easy. Now, as we know, cameras are very sensitive to glare, especially at night, and any light source inside the house or even outside can get reflected back into the camera, ruining the shot. And that includes the camera's own status light and IR lights. My recommendation is to use one of these rubber mounts, which keeps the lens tight against the window. I tested out a couple of these in another video and show you which style works best. As for the status light and IR lights, turn these off so that there's no reflection. Also, if possible, close any curtains or blinds behind the camera to keep that space dark and the reflections out. Now this next mistake is kind of obvious, but worth bringing up just the same. Don't point the camera at unnecessary zones or surveillance areas. Try to maximize the viewing area with details or places where you could see some action. Avoid capturing a wall or the sky or trees. Well, unless that's your goal, of course. Now in this example right here, I wanna watch my driveway, the primary entryway onto my property and these garage doors as well. I wanna keep an eye on those, but I don't need to see the neighbor's house off in the distance and I don't care to capture the sky. So I'm gonna keep those out of the shot. Now, if you happen to capture direct sunlight every day, that would degrade your image and it's not good on the camera's lens and sensor. Now, I understand that every situation is different and sometimes it's impossible to avoid unwanted zones. If that area happens to be a neighbor's house or yard, adjust the viewing angle to minimize coverage on their property or even create a privacy zone to cover up that area. If it's obvious that you have a camera pointed at your neighbor's property, it might be a good idea to let them know so they don't get weirded out by you recording their property. Who knows, your neighbor might not even care and might want you recording some of their property because it's free surveillance for them. Okay, so I got one more bonus point to share on this topic. And yes, you guessed it, it's about IR lights. These four cameras all have different zoom levels or lens sizes. Each camera projects its IR lights at different angles depending on the camera's zoom level. I have the four cameras here at the bottom of the screen. Using another security camera, you can see the angle of the IR lights change depending on the zoom level from wide to zoomed in. And as you can tell in each case, the brightest lights are concentrated in the center of the shot. This is important because in an attempt to angle the camera to avoid unnecessary zones, you may not have good IR light coverage on the zone that you actually want to cover. Now in this shot, I don't want all this wasted space of the sky and direct sunlight. You can see me on the deck and the direct sunlight is making the rest of the shot dark. So I load the camera for excellent ground coverage and now we're back to normal brightness. Let's zoom in for a side-by-side -side comparison of how removing the sun from the shot improves the overall image. And using the same scenario by night, if the camera is raised, the IR lights reach the patio, which is great. But if I lower the camera for more ground coverage, the IR lights don't go as far and are focused more on the grass. And obviously we're missing out on the details on the patio. In this side-by-side, -side, we can see how the IR lights are at the strongest in the center of the shot. So it's important to find the happy medium depending on your situation and needs. Now let's move on to number seven. This is an easy one to make, installing a camera where a light is shining directly on the lens. I see this one a lot. So in this situation right here, this is one of the worst places to install a security camera. By day, with the light off, the image looks perfect. But as soon as night falls 
and this light turns on, it creates a huge glare on the dome. The light is not in the camera's field of view, so we can't see it through the camera, but as soon as it gets turned on, it gets reflected back into the lens off the inside of the dome. Now if I turn off the light, you can see that the glare totally disappears. The easy way to avoid this mistake is to install the camera where the light does not shine directly onto the lens. In this scenario, the camera should have been installed right here, just far enough away so the light doesn't shine in front of the dome. Now this one here, I see it pretty often, exposed cables. Ideally, any cable should be hidden in an eave or a wall or even in a junction box. This is a quick time lapse of an install I did a few years ago, keeping all of the cables enclosed and neatly in these junction boxes and conduit. Now, if you must leave cables exposed, make sure at a minimum they are out of reach. Obviously, when they're low, somebody could walk up and disconnect or cut them. Also, don't forget that if cables are exposed, the sun's UV is going to end up rotting away the plastic coating. Also, there's some level of satisfaction found with a neat install when there's no cables lying around or exposed. Now, these two last mistakes deal with the preparing and planning of the camera install. Number nine is installing a camera without testing it first to make sure that it works and connects to the app. I highly recommend setting up the camera inside to make sure that it connects to the network, app, or NVR, or whatever your case may be. Some cameras setup wizards walk you through the setup with voice directions and is much more convenient doing that inside than outdoors on a ladder. Welcome to Reolink. Please install Reolink app and scan the QR code on the camera. As you've seen in my other videos, Reolink includes a cable with every camera, not because you're going to install a camera three feet or one meter from the NVR, but to encourage you to get everything set up inside before climbing that ladder. Now the last one is a huge one and it's the most common mistake I see for DIYers. Not taking the time or having the skill to run quality network cables to security camera install sites. It's tempting to rely on Wi-Fi and solar powered cameras because they are convenient, but the shortcut can hurt the overall reliability of your system and will limit you on certain types of camera styles and functions. If you have poor or inconsistent Wi-Fi signal strength at camera install sites, you could be missing out, you could have missed frames or lag. Just check out the difference between the wired and wireless lag on the system right here. This one here is wireless using the antenna. This one here is wired into my router and then into the NVR. So the wired camera is the screen right here and the wireless is this one right here and already you can see there is a lag problem. A network wired connection will support PoE or power over Ethernet, which sends both data and power over the same cable. This will open up the door for devices requiring more power, like larger PTZ cameras with extended zoom features. A wired connection will also allow for continuous live feed, viewing, and full time recording. When using solar powered and battery operated cameras, recording is only possible when motion is detected, not full time. Also, batteries may not last as long in winter temperatures and shorter hours of sunlight with those battery operated devices. Running cables through attics, walls, conduit, or even vinyl siding, or even underground takes skills and patience. If you don't have the patience or aren't confident in your abilities, consider hiring a professional. When installing a security camera yourself, I recommend going the wired route. If that's not feasible, I hope that this sheds some light on the possible limitations and challenges that could arise with a non-wired solution. All right, guys, that wraps up our 10 most common security camera install mistakes and how to avoid making them. As you heard me say in a lot of these points, it's a best practice to test, test, and test again. So test your wires, test your camera's connection, and test your permanent install location using your phone or with the security camera in hand. And once you're happy with the results, then you can go and make that install. I hope that you found this information helpful. If so, leave me a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future home tech DIY projects you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.